All right, YouTube. Today we're gonna solve for the required coefficient of friction between some rolling object and a ramp, such that that object is going to roll without slipping. Now this rolling object can be a ball, a hoop, or a disc. Just so long as it's round, it's gonna be able to roll down the hill, and if there's enough friction between the hill and the ball, or whatever it is, it's gonna roll without slipping. Now there's two common ways to solve this problem. The first is looking at the translation or linear motion of this object down the hill. The other method is to look at the rotation of this ball as it's headed down the hill. Now regardless of which of these methods we use to solve for the coefficient of friction between this ball and the hill, we're going to need to have an understanding of the forces which are acting on the ball, which of course means we're drawing a free body diagram. And the force by gravity and the normal force are acting in relatively straightforward manners on this ball. Gravity is pulling down and the normal force is acting at a right angle to the slope of the hill itself. But the friction is a little bit complicated because it's doing several things to this ball. In a translational or linear sense, the friction force is acting up the hill on the ball causing it to slow down. Or really it's causing it to accelerate more slowly than it would if this ball was able to just slide without friction down the hill. Kind of like an ice cube or a kid on a sled. Now in a rotational sense, this friction force is causing the ball to rotate. And so depending on how we choose to solve this problem, we're going to need to be careful in how we account for friction mathematically in each of these methods. So looking at this situation first through a translational lens. We're going to take a look first at Newton's second law. The sum of all forces equals ma. Now within the plane of this hill, there's actually two forces acting on this rolling object. We've got friction up the hill, but remember, gravity also has a component parallel to the hill. And I'm going to call that component the force down the hill. So we actually have the sum of all forces, that is the force down the hill minus the friction force, Realize this friction force is negative because it's in the opposite direction of the force down the hill. And we're going to set that equal to ma. Now both the force down the hill and the friction force can be expanded. Where the force down the hill is mg sine theta. And friction is given by mu fn or mu mg cosine theta. So substituting these two expressions for a force down the hill and friction into Newton's second law. We get this expression, and you'll notice the mass of the ball cancels out. Now once we have this expression, we can solve for the coefficient of friction between the object and the hill, provided we know the acceleration of that rolling object down the hill. Now, solving for the acceleration of this object on the hill can be a bit of a challenge, uh, but luckily, the last two videos I've made have been about precisely how to solve for this acceleration. If you want to see those, click up here. Now, depending on whether you have a ball, a hoop, or a solid disc, the acceleration of this object is going to vary. So I'm going to just go ahead and solve for mu here using the acceleration of a sphere. Regardless, the acceleration of a sphere is given by 5 sevenths g sine theta. So substituting this term in here, we can now solve for the required mu. And we find the coefficient of static friction between a sphere and a hill that is required to keep this sphere rolling without slipping is 2 sevenths tangent theta. And remember, if we're dealing with a disk instead of a sphere, we'd simply plug in a different value for acceleration right here and that would result in a different required coefficient of friction. So now that we've solved this problem using Newton's second law, I want to take a look at the rotational method of solving for the required coefficient of friction between this rolling object and the hill. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the sum of all torques around the center of this rolling object. Now there's three forces which are acting on this rolling object. But the catch is, only one of them, friction, is actually producing torque on the object as it rolls down the hill. So the sum of all torques on the object is simply going to be the torque by friction. Now we know torque is given by 
a force times a radius multiplied by the sine of the angle between these two vectors. So the torque by friction is going to be given by the friction force multiplied by the radius of this ball hoop or whatever it is. Now we're just going to call the radius R. Now it's not given to us in the problem, so we're interjecting this variable into the problem, but realize it's going to go away in a minute. Now we know our friction force, just like over here, is given by mu fn or mu mg cosine theta. So the torque by friction is given by mu mg cosine theta multiplied by r. Now there's another way to look at torque. Realize torque is given by a rotational moment of inertia multiplied by an angular acceleration. So we're going to set this total torque, or sum of all torques on this rolling object, equal to I alpha. Now this angular acceleration alpha is not the same as the linear acceleration of the ball down the hill, which we were discussing here, but it can be related, where alpha is equal to A over R, where R is the radius of the ball. So now we have two substitutions to make, which are both specific to the shape of this rolling object. So I'm again going to use a sphere for these substitutions. The first substitution is looking at the rotational moment of inertia of this object, which for a sphere is 2 fifths mr squared. The next substitution, just like over here when we're looking at things in a straight line, is the linear acceleration of the ball down the hill. So subbing these two values into this equation, we'll notice the radius cancels out, as does the mass. Cleaning this up a bit, and g. So cleaning this up a bit, we find the same result that we did as when we looked at this problem through a linear or translational perspective. The required coefficient of friction is 2 sevenths tangent theta. And again, if we were to change the shape of this rolling object, say make it a disc or a hoop, we would need to change not only the acceleration, but also the rotational moment of inertia to reflect the values for that particular shape. So this has been the two ways to solve for the required coefficient of static friction between a rolling object and a hill such that it will roll without slipping. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.